Hello beautiful earth angels, bit of a switch up today, bit of a change up, I just really am feeling going with the flow and seeing how things go so we're not coming on with any particular channeled reading or message, I wanted to pull some cards for you from this deck because this deck is mysteriously holding energy for you so I feel like there are some loops of frequency in here that can really reflect back something very powerful to bring something confirmational to you inside of your energy that can help you connect with that lucidity and that confirmation of self in your higher truths things like that so we're going to be pulling a card i feel like again this reading as well just being in flow I feel like you guys are almost like masters of finding flow and it's reminding me of the whole Teo energy we've done a reading on before, how you have a specific spirit guide who works with you in these philosophical ways. Now, I feel like this spirit guide is stepping up to the forefront to do extra work with you at the minute. This spirit guide energy, this can also be an aspect of self. Oh, okay, it's opening up this aspect of self this spirit guide is an aspect of self and it's a carried over aspect of self from a either past life incarnation or someone you've connected to astrally like this could be a spirit guide that you've connected to throughout certain astral travels astral travels being thought travels into different um, states of consciousness and different states of consciousness being connected to different um, frequencies of timeline, frequencies of plane, of dimension um, in the astral, in the mind. And so I feel like you've picked up this spirit guide or you've connected with them through certain thought travels you've been on. Um, but it could also be like a reconnection because there is a strong energy of how you were connected to this energy before in a past life or this is an aspect of self built up in a past life i feel like you guys you have a lot of ancient past lives like we said before but more than anything as well you guys um uh, yeah this is connected because we spoke about this recently as well about how there seems to be like this re-accessing of neural pathways it's almost as if within certain periods of time it's like a new regions new regions of the astral new frequencies of the astral are accessible to you so that means new regions of the mind are accessible to you when it comes to new thought pathways um, thoughts, memories, and concepts that are maybe new to you, that you are walking through, um, thinking through, and it's not that they're necessarily completely new, it's that you're being, you'll re-remember, you're re-walking down certain timeline paths and certain pa neural pathways that are actually familiar to you that you have accessed before in the past. Now, this can be for a certain period of time for your journey. You had a download or epiphany of certain philosophical um, teachings and knowings that you could apply to your own inner state actions and energy that really created significant shifts in frequency for you and shifts in alignment for you and manifestations for you. And I feel like a lot of inner peace to you as well because your spirit guides or this aspect of self this frequency you're working with is um bringing a lot of peace internally because of the particular concepts it's working on so when we talk about um this being connected to philosophy this is really kind of going into metaphysics but inner philosophies you guys are connected to some really deep inner philosophies and some of these inner philosophies are connected to like energetic stance such as like the energetic placement that we are kind of taking when we're maybe perceiving certain situations or speaking to ourselves like certain truths of these are connected to packages of download certain packages of download could have been um such as the deeper understanding to the importance of say vibration in words how we speak to ourselves 
is echoing that vibration through our body with the words that we're speaking because words hold vibration and so do the intention we charge them up with and that is just like one little package of way of philosophy we can live by because philosophies is coming through with two different types of energy for you guys in this reading it's coming through with first the first type of energy being philosophies as in as in philosophical concepts like Teo or we said in the last reading one of the last readings like the art of noticing um, these these philosophy concepts um, of areas that we can kind of divulge into and unravel to lay out internally to kind of act and move from those spaces of truths and understandings but it's coming through in another way in a sense of like the philosophies that we live by and I feel like there's certain philosophies you live by that were downloaded to you from this aspect of self and again this aspect of self could be connected to Greece as well or someone could have a connection to Greece and feel really like uh, a pull or an intuitive highlight an intuitive amplification over that energy you could have certain guides working with you or deities working with you from the greek type of um area uh period of time um and yeah this aspect of philosophy as well so it could be that some of you actually have books that you like reading by certain philosophers that are like long in the past or um going and moving through certain practices of philosophers or there's like one you feel particularly called to that won't be for everybody but the main message here is that you are re-downloading and reconnecting to some very old philosophies that you are moving through life and living by you have done in the past and they're almost reawakening within you and i think that this could be a nice deck to pull some cards to clarify what these new um or re-remembered inner philosophies are really coming up to do with because they are creating an inner expansion for you and they are creating a frequency shift for you as well some people watching this could be connecting with their guides a lot in between sleep and wake, like just before you go to sleep, but more prominently, just before you wake up as well. Someone could be channeling in their inner monologue, having a very strong inner monologue in between sleep and wake, where you're passing over information from your subconscious to your conscious or from your spirit guides um, in the subconscious and then weaving that in to be carried over into your conscious. Some of you could do a lot of energy weaving within this space or periods of time just before bed or just after waking up this energy weaving is really like you're tying together energy internally which almost feels like tidying up or clearing and um it settles certain energy down some of you could come to come round and wake up a bit more and maybe forget some of these channelings but it, it doesn't really matter because in this space of time whether you remember your channelings or whether you remember what you're doing in the astral realms within these periods of time of like in and out of consciousness of this vessel you are changing and rewiring your subconscious and so you are energetically weaving you are making some big shifts internally right now when it comes to reintegrating and aligning with a framework of mentality that is adjusted to integration with some of your truths that you've been re-downloading so truths of like perspective truths of understanding truths of understanding certain the importance of certain things um and you know internal energies when we talk about like these things it could be in many different ways so um let's pull a card for you to maybe clarify certain philosophies that are coming through because it does feel like this stepping back slowing down in a type of way now this doesn't mean that you physically have to be slowing down it could be a stepping back internally to a higher viewpoint like a vantage point and it's like now that we're stepping back and zooming out we are almost placing in and weaving in philosophies and certain downloads perspectives and truths that then you're integrating to then carry on moving through life, utilizing with the awareness and knowing of their power. So you under and, and that's this is the other thing that's connected is that you understand 
the power of things a lot deeper than most people. And that's something that you guys need to be reminded of is that you do feel energetically the understandings of the importance of certain things. This isn't to put pressure on things because obviously like balance within everything, we're here to ebb and flow, you guys know this, here to ebb and flow with our own like pendulum and seasons and changes, lower frequencies and higher frequencies, uh, the lower creating the higher, you understand that you are a cyclical being, um, always weaving in and out of your conscious and the unconscious, your lower awareness, your higher awareness, these lower vibrations and higher vibrations, which really have no stance of good or bad or right or wrong, it's just that we experience them differently and we can make those experiences and we're here to embrace those experiences so when we're going in those lower vibrational planes I call this dipping down into the well to bring up knowledge like Aquarius energy the the water bearers the water bringers that's what Aquarius is is like depicted by that jug of pouring water and that's really because they're pouring water which is a symbolism of knowledge but water is also symbolism of of emotions so this is emotional intelligence emotional and deep emotional understandings and you dip down to the well dip down into lower frequencies through different periods of time because we are not meant to maintain a particular state necessarily um because if you think about it this is one level one level of truth truth is different at different levels of consciousness reserve judgment at one level of truth is that we are ebbing and flowing like the seasons. There is not one season throughout the whole of the year. We are not here to maintain a state of mood or frequency throughout the rest of our existence. In fact, the ebbing and flowing of our frequency creates our journey and story. The same as if you like we watched a film and you know they were just in this maintained state the whole way through. It's kind of like, okay, where's the journey where's the story and so you could be at a point in your journey where you're noticing that you go through ebb and flows you go through dipping down to the well to gain some very deep emotional understandings about yourself and certain deeper zoomed out life philosophies that you then apply and take with you into your next chapter and phases because why i was mentioning this um bringing it up in the first place how we got into these loops of um, perspective in the astral is that um, like we were saying not to maintain the particular state of frequency sometimes when we enter lower lows or we enter higher highs like we try and hold that energy and we try to maintain that energy or if we are in lower lows we feel as if we're stuck in that energy or we need to change it but the thing is with you guys is that I think you are really beautiful at going through your life journey and understanding these deeper philosophies that connect into these matrices of labyrinths okay the matrices of labyrinths that are particularly about that wanting to change the self I feel like you guys have come to a lot of deeper understandings about yourself emotionally that allows this deeper acceptance towards yourself helps you understand yourself deeper helps you understand those around you deeper and through acceptance becomes change so if we can't accept things we're wanting to change them but we can't change things without the acceptance it's such a loophole i feel like you guys understand the ebb and flow and you honor yourself through all phases sides and aspects of yourself whether those be your shadow aspects your wounded aspects whether those be your higher self aspects whatever aspect you wake up and you're called to sit in that day you are knowing that you're called there for a reason because there's something for you there to gather whether that be an emotional perspective that is through a lens that only you could reach through entering some of those deeper further out spaces which can feel uncomfortable sometimes or whether it's you know vice versa you sitting in that energy to discover and take with you from that plane of vibration certain perspectives certain outlooks and ideas and inspirations and we continue moving through that flow of the beautiful journey of your life because again 
without the ups and downs there is no story and why this is conditioned by society is because in society there's no room for ebb and flow there's no room for natural ebb and flow in the sense of cycles and seasons and changes because in society with the nine to five jobs um, we're almost conditioned to take ourselves out of our cyclical nature why because we have to show up every single day in that place no, no matter what energy we're feeling we have to push that aside and we show up there and there's like no time off it's like all the same all year round right it's like there is no cyclical nature when it comes to like um say like society in certain ways that has been built up and i feel like because you're so sensitive and in tune with your inner spiritual journey you are going to have such a strong connection or feeling to your cyclical nature which means that you may not be able to push to aside your cycles of your seasons, which what a blessing because, you know, sometimes we want to feel great and we want to push aside how we're really feeling to push away that cyclical nature, right? To maintain a, maintain a certain state. But in, in, in actuality, you can't push this aside because of how in tune you are with your inner realms. You know, you are kind of actually forced to flow, which is so weird because flow and force are so opposite but it's kind of interconnected because you guys being in tune with your emotions means that you're in tune with the flow of your inner cycles because they're not something we necessarily control it's something that happens and we can choose to flow with or resist against right realizing we have less control than we think allows us control i feel like this is also another loop of perspective that you guys have moved through before is that you go into these spiritual cycles where certain energies are almost researched deeper into through your actual incarnational experiences. For example, control and surrender. This could be energetically highlighted for a certain period of time for you where you do these deeper spiritual works, where you understand certain aspects of energy to a very, very deep level. You get fully immersed in certain energies, which allows you to come out with these very profound found woven networks of understanding towards different areas and aspects of uh, maybe philosophical uh, areas or emotional areas and understandings and um, like understandings of the mind emotions or you know action and energy and you know you guys I feel like this is like a real checkpoint here that is saying and reflecting confirmation to you that you have been flowing, you have been listening to your seasons and cycles, and you have been allowing yourself to actually gather what you need from each dimensional space that you are being placed and planted into every day, because every day will not feel the same, and every day will not be the same because of that, or we can push our feelings aside and every day can be the same, but you are not the same every day, you feel different every day, we're in different energies every day because you know going to sleep and waking up doesn't mean we've paused from yesterday we're doing so much in our sleep and in our higher self and higher awareness especially you tuning in and watching you are so deeply connected to your higher awareness and your higher self your soul self is not is not contained to this vessel and you do a lot of astral travel and so when you're dreaming, when your body and vessel is at rest, where does your consciousness go? It is flicking between the multiverse, different timelines of reality, different areas of the brain, which are physicalizing into a picture form that we perceive as a dream of reality. The same as this reality is in picture form, but everything is a manifestation of our thoughts or mind or um, inner realm. It's our inner realm reflected out. And the inner realm is the quantum realm where all the timelines are existing, all the multiverse exists. So if we're tapping into certain timelines and frequencies internally inside ourselves, we're going to be also seeing that or experiencing that on the outside, especially when we say when we go to sleep, when we're falling asleep, we are kind of moving away from this physical reality of um, perception. So where we're sitting internally and residing in consciousness in our waking, right? That's this reality. So if we are kind of moving away from that and we're exploring other planes of frequency and other timelines, 
whilst we our vessel is in rest we are moving through different parts of the brain parts of the subconscious dimensional planes and frequencies some of these planes you move through are different timelines parallel timelines that can be very mundane or similar to this reality and grounded into this reality some of these timelines or spaces you're entering are not necessarily ones that are physically inhabitable here on earth they're spaces in the astral that are more energy spaces um, that don't need to be so physical but you experience them physically in your dream like certain locations you go to that aren't in your physical reality are places in the astral that you're traveling to that you're connecting with that you're connected with internally that are not here externally and they're even not here externally because they're in another planet plane dimension realm or they're in a different time time period so you guys do a lot of astral travel and work when you go to sleep and wake up you are not going to feel the same as yesterday because you've lived a whole day a whole lifetimes in the astral because the astral there is no such thing as time so some of you it's like you have dreams you could feel like you've had a dream for like and been in that dream for weeks you could have felt like you had a dream and it lasted 10 minutes you could have had a dream and felt like so much has happened in that dream that you just feel so far away from the person you were yesterday because some of you are having quite profound dream experiences astral projections astral travels lucid dreams or just in general certain experiences that stay with you in the next day that you linger on and because the feeling of lingering on them is that feeling of connection to them when you are at them and you're going to some very cool places in the astral when your vessel is sleeping even if you don't remember guys like consciously you are and i think that is such a weird thing that dreams have been really woven into the collective energy right now not just dreams but like this brain frequency wave state this brain wave frequency state that you're entering you seem to be doing a lot of subconscious work in so in your dreams in your REM okay in your uh, brain wave states like the lower ones that are more relaxed that say REM frequencies or um the delta is it delta beta no gamma beta i forget the order that they go in after a while you guys but the lower brainwave states of frequency your body's going under like some deep healing and repair and because of this you actually might be waking up this can vary from person to person you could be waking up feeling quite actually tired and your body's quite achy especially if you've been doing a lot in your astral planes um, on the other hand this can go two ways of extreme you either can wake up feeling quite tired and and quite unrested or you can wake up feeling extremely rested and like you've been <laughs> in sleep for like years or something there's definitely a lot that happens uh, regardless to this physical this physical is like just one little half of everything that's really going on internally for you guys and you know we kind of divulged and went away from the loops there for a bit but what this was really on about is that you're following your ebb and flow of your seasons and your cycles and you're going to feel different every day and that is kind of like the roadmap of your spiritual journey and that some days you'll feel better than others and that doesn't mean that they're better or worse it means that we learn to embrace each frequency of dimension so you guys something that you've really done is learn to embrace and feel safe within different dimensional planes or frequency because as much as like workers are entering these extremely expanded high states of consciousness everything is in its opposite everything is in its balance and so you guys the high highs you have you also have low low lows because these low low lows is like the as and below tree of life your roots have reached so deep and your your you can bear fruit and grow out so so much taller because if we do not have strong roots, our tree cannot grow up because it will fall over. It will not be grounded or supported. But the thing is, is that you gain different dimensional truths and understandings and clarities within the different vibrations. So lower vibrational truths and understandings are more like experiences we can have that teach us really firsthand the importance of certain energies or the impact of cause and effect and things like that high vibrational truths kind of tie up that experience together and bring those higher keys of um, knowledge but we can only have those with that lower experience too sometimes so you know um, you guys have been really um, 
having a pat on the back by spirit for how much that you have been able to embrace all vibrational dimensional planes and the full spectrum of you and not uh, cutting any parts of yourself out because all aspects are a part of self and all aspects correlate to a certain frequency so if we're shutting certain frequencies out meaning we're shutting certain emotions out means we're shutting certain parts of ourselves out and those parts of ourselves have a lot to teach us and have so much wisdom as well and i feel like you guys again you're aware of this you understand this so the main message to be gathered there is that you have been gaining so much profound emotional understanding healing and keys of knowledge from all aspects of yourself not just your higher self your lower self your shadow self all parts of yourself you have been learning from through understanding them within yourself and you have not been shutting down or refusing any frequencies you have been uh, reviewing and observing everything that is coming up internally through you knowing that that is the bl blueprint and the, the the ebb and flow of your cycles of your spiritual journey so let's pull a card for you beautiful souls because like we say like you guys are on a journey of dissolving separation like in higher planes of consciousness the separation is dissolved and so right now yes internal aspects are in this form of separation and 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 that's encompassing the lower as well we can experience lower in separation so there can be inner aspects of ourself or emotions of ourself that we consider to be lower frequencies or shadow emotions but in higher planes there is unity consciousness which means that these higher higher perspectives um, are actually packages of frequency that are whole and whole packages of frequency are counterpart frequencies which means that they have the lower and the higher that make them the full vision of understanding does that make sense like the opposites in frequency on the scale of vibration and I say this one a lot because it's the easiest one to go to but shame and pride so shame and pride are their opposites. Now we cannot have all the full conscious keys of understanding pride without first understanding shame or the importance of pride in, without first understanding shame. We can never really fully embrace and and pull the frequency to vibrate out of us so clearly pride if we have not faced the shame first. Like they create each other, but higher perspective truths are always an encompassment of dissolved separation so there's these counterparts of beautiful puzzle pieces that when they connect together they create some very profound discoveries epiphanies of healing and understanding but they're in separation internally and they're in separation and perceived to be that way um and so like with you guys going through these ego deaths um throughout your spiritual journey so far actually allows you to embrace your darker side and to rejoin these counterparts with one another to gain a fuller understanding picture of certain frequencies and certain emotions and states of vibration and aspects of self because like we say you're rejoining all aspects of self internally to dissolve the separation and the separations <clears throat> only over there through like fracturing or separation in rejection i reject that part of myself because it it's like i can reject a, a thought that comes up because i'm like let me just let me just think of a thought right um i'm not good enough okay oh everything's just not going right oh let me just reject that thought because right now i'm actually aligned with my higher self and I know that that's not higher self truth, so let me just reject that. Instead of being like, oh, holding that energy there and being like, oh, actually, where did that energy frequency come from? What aspect of myself is speaking that thought? Because all thoughts come from a different aspect of self and thoughts can be very scattered. But we'll, the more that we observe our thoughts, the more we can tie thoughts and beliefs together that are connected to the same aspect because certain aspects of self can have multiple different belief separate belief systems attached to it and these belief systems can come up as thoughts but we not always can connect it to the aspect of self i feel like you guys are deeper defining your inner connection to self in a way of differentiating where certain thoughts are coming from 
because thoughts will come from belief systems and those belief systems will be tied to an aspect of self. But I can have two lower belief systems that are separate and different connected to the same aspect because say there's a period of time where a certain aspect of me was formed. Let's say in secondary school or school or high school, there will be an aspect of me formed that was that had these experiences that built certain beliefs in me like I don't have a personality, I'm boring, I um, I can't communicate the same as everyone else because beliefs are learned, through, a lot of beliefs are gained through observation that we make to our surroundings and so it all kind of culminates together to this one big aspect of self and then I feel like you guys have done a lot of work to integrate and not reject and re- heal in a sense of loving and understanding different aspects of yourself so when these thoughts pop up i'm not shoving them away and being like oh that doesn't resonate with my high vibration nature it's to be like what aspect of self is that thought coming from that is actually quite a low vibrational belief system because low vibrational belief systems creates our own limitations so it's not about pushing our way it's about understanding it to unravel it to dissolve it to alchemize it and you guys this is the process Process that you guys have been on. You have been an active participant in dissolving the separation in your own frequency and internal realms and energy through observation, through the art of noticing, through acceptance, through surrender, through the dissolving of your ego to push away certain energies or thoughts just to maintain an identification with a certain aspect of self or frequency because we can sit in a certain aspect of self and then, and each time a different one wants to come up, we can push that aspect away and say, no, I'm staying in this aspect of frequency. And actually, so many of them have so much to teach us. And I feel like you guys, again, with the ego deaths and everything, um, it actually takes a lot to embrace and to understand and to do shadow healing. Because one, because it can be extremely uncomfortable to experience and face certain truths and beliefs about ourselves that, that are formed through wounding experiences or, you know, hurtful experiences. So one, that's what we were talking about, is the environment you've made internally for yourself to feel safe um, in embodying all aspects of yourself, in sitting in all frequencies of vibration because lower frequencies feel uncomfortable to sit in. Things that are uncomfortable we naturally don't want to do and so you know we can avoid but you guys have made a um, sense of internal self that is almost like this safety. This safety that it's safe to sit in certain energies, it's safe to feel certain things, it's safe to face certain truths because certain truths are actually overwhelming to face. This isn't necessarily just truths about self, it's truths about reality, truths about society, truths truths about our past, past choices, things like this. And you guys having the courage to have created that safe space to embrace all aspects of yourself and actually be so honest with your internal self that you are encompassing and uniting all parts of yourself and unifying them means that you are flowing through this ebb and flow of pulling together energies. So the separation is dissolving because it doesn't mean that it gets rid of the low vibration. It means it joins it up with its counterpart to have the full unity of neutralization. So like high frequency, low frequency neutralized together. And this neutralization creates acceptance because neutrality is in the 4D vibration. And 4D is all about neutrality, acceptance. It's like the higher and lower you know, it's like the meeting point is the 4D and the 4D is actually very powerful at creating a inner harmonizational in a harmonized state or an inner flow state because the 4D takes into consideration the lower and higher. The higher is great to go to to get certain keys of perspectives and to get certain inspirations, epiphanies and downloads and the lower is great for the same but the middle is where we bring the two together. You go through periods of time where you refine and define a certain aspect of self and you reintegrate it. So you will be in a certain area for a while of self or energy or frequency or cycles that you're working on and healing and doing work to understand and then we reintegrate that afterwards so we go fully into it and then we pull it back to the self this is like we go into the higher and then we pull it back to the middle we go to the lower we pull it back to the middle and in this way you're weaving together weaving together 
um, from through all these different states. And also the middle is great because the middle allows space for all parts of the self because again, it's that acceptance and it allows um, the almost convergent point. It's kind of like, this is the higher circle. This is the lower circle, higher vibrational timelines and truths, lower vibrational timelines, wisdoms and truths. And then the middle emergence point is like this. It creates the looking eye and that felt really significant because it's like you place certain things over each other and you can kind of look through it to see a whole different picture you know kind of like the red and the blue okay like 3d glasses it's like the the blue lens and the red lens if we look through one or the other like we could draw a picture uh, of a face and the face could be drawn in red and it could be like really sad or something and the blue face over the top could be drawn in blue and be really happy but if I'm looking through the red lens I'm only ever going to see the red face and if I'm looking through the blue lens I'm only ever going to see the blue face if I look through both lenses together I can see both at once I can see the vision of understanding that comes from the unification of the higher and the lower and and in that sense it's like more powerful but because it's more encompassing because we're encompassing so much more energy than just one space or one or the other you know I feel like we went on a bit of a a ramble this reading but you guys are really really creating such a sense of unification through dissolving of separation internal integration okay internal integration is a big one um and yeah, like we say, unification, but also the way that you're moving through and doing this is with being assisted and, and being assisted by frequencies in the astral planes and downloads and messages you're getting. And like I say, just opening up certain areas of yourself and diving deep into those and um, bringing them back into that full picture again. So I just split the deck to change course. A closed door is an invitation from life to move in an even better direction. It's time to change course. I also have a little um, a little plaque up here that says, sometimes on the way to a dream, we get lost and find a better one. Life is lived through experience. Um, so when we say like mistakes, like not really mistakes, it's finding out. We have to find out. Life lives through experience and you know, it's always safe to change course and I feel like you're someone who's very uncondensed from one particular timeline of frequency, meaning that you have multiple potential timelines for your trajectory of your life path and you can actually tap into these and flick between them, which can feel like sometimes we have a lack of direction when we have so much direction because you're accessing in yourself the timelines in the quantum realm these are all possibilities possibility is something big for you and possibility is changing as we learn more so each chapter and phase you go through you're learning more about yourself about life and this changes and expands what is possible for you and so you're always weaving down this never-ending story of ever unfolding story because as you expand your potentials expand so you are creating and tapping into unknowns as you evolve as you move in ephemeral state Okay, femoral, meaning that, you know, you're evolving with the evolution of your life. Your life is evolving and changing with the evolution of you. And it's not got one set course because that one set course comes from a particular state of mindset or version of self. And that one set course can stay the same if we stay the same, but you are ultimately evolving, changing, and your course can change as well in so many beautiful ways. And I feel like right now you're actually tapping tapping into some maybe new potential possibilities that could be ahead for you that you're yet to walk through because right here you're on the outside of the wall outside of the door and these keys are hanging and it's like you actually have accessible to you multiple running parallel timelines and it seems like you're about to come into a stage where you condense into one of them success is on the cards for you quite literally <laughs> success is on the cards for you and surprise so yes yeah, so this says today is a really good day you're in the flow problems are solved quickly and easily helpful people show up for you and unexpected gifts fall into your lap there is definitely a lot to do with unexpected that is going to be opening up for you guys especially yes optimism 
Um, so optimism to me is about tapping into potential timelines that excite us and that ex inspire us. And these can be potential timelines that you can envision to do with the success of some shape or form. Well, whatever that means to you, success, you know, what you daydream of in these states where you're dreaming, where you're escaping mentally, where you're connecting through your heart space um, into your internal realms and, and looking out and daydreaming and, you know, yearning and, and discovering what parts of your soul are reaching for what energies. Um, I feel like there is you moving through that space and reconnecting with a particular part of you that realigns you to a deeper singularized path but right now maybe you could have been in a space of a bit of uncondensed energy which means you're a bit untethered to one particular alignment and that is completely fine but again feeling safe to feel untethered feeling safe and not panicking to change things when we feel a lack of direction feeling safe to be in a state of unknown feeling safe to be in a state of undecided okay um, and undiscovered and actually uh, evolving and watching yourself and your life change and evolve as you do again in this femoral state so i love you all so much this is where i'm going to leave today's reading i'll speak to you all very soon i know it was a bit different but hopefully you have been able to receive some confirmation or some validation to your internal processes and the journey that you're going on, because there's a lot in society that tells us we should be doing this, we shouldn't be doing this. The truth is we're always exactly where we're meant to be. And it's about finding the perspectives that validate that, that. because the perspectives that validate that uh, example, you are always exactly where you're meant to be. The truths and beliefs connected to that are going to be the truths and beliefs that set you the most free in this, in this moment right now. You're always where you're meant to be. So you guys are connecting with truths that, again, like I just said, are validating that for you because those are going to be the ones that bring the most acceptance which then you can utilize the frequencies that you're in the most right now without wanting to change or feel like you need to change something about yourself because it's like yeah maybe we could always be changing something but we're exactly how we're meant to be right now for this period of time to gather the information experience and understandings that we need for now to move forward into what we're moving into so our paths are all different and your path is going to be unique to you never judge yourself based on how you're feeling or how aligned you feel in a, in a sense because sometimes we're not always going to necessarily feel aligned because sometimes we do untether to energetically assort and go through essential shifts in vibration. We can't shift in vibration if we are tethered to a particular timeline alignment because we are solidified in that timeline alignment. We cannot create change and sometimes it's not us creating change, it's that your guides are creating change for you. So they put you in this state of untethered energy which can feel like we are unsure about a future trajectory or alignment do not let that make you feel like you don't know what you're doing and want to change parts of yourself. The reason that you feel untethered sometimes is because you are being untethered to be repotted in a new timeline frequency. And yes, it can be tiring as a starseed lightworker to be repotted so often because you are moving up and through dimensional planes to some higher vibrational timelines and yes we can quantum leap and quantum jump but not all the time we move through there through vibrational frequency one plane at a time so you're on these stepping stones to these beautiful places and the place is not the destination it's the journey through these timelines that you gather your experiences that create your story your journey of up and down high and low healing experiencing gaining a widened perception of yourself and life and you know, all that good, bad and the ugly, all aspects of self, all parts of life to be embraced. And, you know, so don't, yeah, don't feel any type of way sometimes if you are untethered, because we don't always have to feel aligned to be aligned with our correct course and path, because sometimes we're realigning. 
because we're redefining who we are, because we're redefining who we are, because we're always rediscovering who we are through the expansion of your mind. And the expansion of your mind is expanding a lot more than some others around you because of this sense of ego breaking down and you questioning certain things about yourself and learning new things about yourself. Every time you learn something new about yourself is because you've listened to your inner emotions or thoughts and opened them up to a deeper level, to a more expanded level to understand yourself. And every time you understand yourself and rediscover yourself, your you expand, your knowledge expands, and so you change. And as you change, your frequency changes, what we want changes, everything is always evolving. So being in this state of finding acceptance to have comfort and safety within each stage of evolution of you is something that that's what's being highlighted within this reading. And Spirit wants you to know you're doing a beautiful job at each stage in evolution, all looking different. None are gonna look the same, some are going to be different frequencies. You're always where you're meant to be. Always stay connected to your truth, which I know you are. And sometimes I don't want this to feel like I'm speaking at you guys because I feel like the things we speak about are confirmation of the thoughts you already have. It's just confirming an aspect of you like I'm speaking and, and that a certain aspect of you is speaking through me and reflecting to you. So this is like nothing you don't already know, but there's other parts of us that think different things, that have different beliefs that can contradict this aspect of yourself. And I feel like you guys are you know, always coming back into reconnection with this aspect of self, but again, allowing yourself to actually fall into those other aspects and accept them and sit in the, those frames of mindset and views through their lenses as well is so beneficial to learning, um, you know, through all different types of frequencies. So I love you so much. <gasps> I'll leave the reading here and I'll speak to you all soon, beautiful earth angels. Mwah.